World's biggest economy is fighting a four-decade high inflation. In an aggressive drive to tame the surge, the U.S. Federal Reserve has raised its key interest rate by 75 basis points. It is the biggest hike in nearly three decades. With a 0.75% hike, the benchmark short-term rate is now at a range of 1.5 to 1.75%. The hike affects many consumer and business loans. The inflation, with inflation having reached a four-decade high of 8.6%, the central bank is ramping up its drive to slow growth. U.S. inflation has been worsened by Russia's war against Ukraine and its effects on energy prices. Shortages of oil. Greetings of the day and... Welcome everyone to a new playlist on global supply chain. <clears throat> well, the market seems gloomy. Well, there is a fear of recession. Stock market is under free fall. And since January 2022 or maybe uh, December 2021, <clears throat> approximately, I think uh, 25 to 30% of companies' stock prices have gone down. Ongoing war and uh, many other factors are contributing to disruption in global supply chain. Well, guys, global supply chain is getting severely affected. So, wake up. Okay. Global supply chain is threatening paralysis well as many of the people must have heard the price of cooking oil is going way way higher than expected what's become the most expensive grocery item to buy right now everyone can agree that cooking oil is definitely on the list the price of cooking oil has gone up and continues to rise exponentially why is this happening? It's a bad situation. So I think firstly, it's during pandemic, everyone thought that uh, there will be slowing down in global supply chain. Well, that was the, well, the expectations were wrong. The opposite happened. Well, pandemic detonated demand surge like never before. Well, everybody needs something. Even I can remember, I wanted to do mining when I was at home during my master thesis period. So I wanted to buy a graphics card. But during the pandemic, the yeah, due to global supply chain disruption, due to uh, shortages of parts, shortages of raw materials, <clears throat> the supply of uh, GPUs were less. So the prices were like almost the double. So everyone needs something. And even some people are ready to pay high. So, though the supply was less and demand was more, so people were paying double than the MRP to buy those GPUs. And similarly, there were other many products. Well, <clears throat> this is Somajit Parida, your host. And uh, well, uh, I'm not an expert. Well, I am a data analyst working in a logistics company. And all the information... I am giving to the viewers through this video is collected from various trusted resources. Well, uh, you can see my portfolio in the link. Uh, I am not a scammer or uh, to, be, to, be, to make things very clear. Uh, well, uh, I am a data analyst as well as uh, I <clears throat> love to make applications and I also create data pipelines during the process of my works okay coming back to the topic First, a small introduction before we go into the disruptions a small introduction about the global supply chain well the picks the pick the the, 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 the pick credits goes to this uh, i took it from david skimmy levi Mention article. This is from an article, and uh, that name of the article is Three Scenarios to Guide Your Global Supply Chain Recovery, dated April 2020. Well, uh, from the first mile to the last mile, 
there are different modalities in involved and if there is a disruption maybe like for example if there is an incident with uh, transportation via the ferry or if there is breakdown of the truck or lack of drivers or uh, not sufficient resources available or if uh, we are not able to book the train uh, slot or if the flight is not available or on time or if there is a strike or if at the port workers are not available for operating the crane or mounting or dismounting many many things so global supply chain has many weak links and if any disruption is happening in that link then the whole chain is getting affected well uh, mm, uh, though i work in a logistics company so we specialized in double deck trailers and which can carry 53 standardized pallets we believe in on time delivery and end to end delivery so at amons uh, we also participate in the global supply chain uh, distribution uh, in in that whole schematic diagram as one of the link in the diagram uh, well this is just an a snippet of uh, how things are crucial and how things can become bad if the resources are not available so many of the problems in our company are also kind of generic to the global supply chain problem but i will touch upon that in the next slides <clears throat> okay coming to the impacts well uh, in the current scenario people can find holiday gifts there is a small video that i would like to share when you think about ordering a USB now, then December. Give me my PlayStation. Am I wrong for wanting this, bro? <laughs> I mean, everything just sucks lately. Take my money. Take my money. I don't want it. Give me my shoe. Every time I check my email, it's stuck on this right here. I don't even know what that means. Tonight, one word sums up the feeling along every line of the supply chain. Frustration. Well, the shortages and delays in the global supply chain threaten a total paralysis. <clears throat> okay, so everyone is affected by global supply chain because everyone wants something and they are not able to get that thing on time. So, people can buy home deco products and utilities, trouble in video cards, food prices are increasing because at many of the stores, there is uh, no delivery of the, raw, <coughs> of the products, of the finished products because yeah, there is a disruption in the global supply chain. To add or to make things clear, I will show some more <coughs> videos. Also at 10 tonight, problems on repeat. Yeah, seeds many of us saw at the beginning of this COVID pandemic starting to become reality once again. Take a look at the left side of your screen, empty store shelves in 2020. And on your right, video taken just tonight showing very similar issues. Bash is telling ABC 15 they're dealing with a, quote, perfect storm of challenges. All right. This is video from 12 January 2022 <clears throat> to, to give or to make things more evident there is another video so seeing more empty shelves at grocery stores across the country just look at what we saw for ourselves today the National Grocers Association says it's a staffing shortage with many stores operating with less than 50 percent of their workers so WHS 11's Isaiah Kim Martinez went to check it out. He has more on the problems here in Louisville. So it is not only the products are not getting delivered because of supply chain, but also of the workers because there is uh, because of the, during the pandemic, many of the shops were closed, and uh, yeah. So to in order to save on the variable cost, <clears throat> the grocery shops have to lay off many of their stops. Okay, this is the last one. 
Market shelves are grabbing a lot of attention from a lot of folks out there, including the former mayor of Atlanta, who complained on Twitter. We are where Atlanta speaks, and we hear your concerns about the low inventory and the higher prices. Supply, supply chain economy. So, low inventory and higher prices. So, this is what I was talking about as shortages of products in the supermarkets. Well, supermarkets, grocery shops, and small stores have all have goods with inflated prices <clears throat> but also one of the contributing factor to high inflated prices is because low inventory and delay in global supply chain deliveries well coming to the causality well uh, there are many points we already know that because of these factors the global supply chain is affected because that is common sense. Okay, the first point means I have listed down those obvious points, but also I will be discussing with people the non-obvious points or the points where I think during my literature review, I didn't find much research on it. But on these points, there has been a lot of research already available in Google Scholar and many other research papers. Okay, the first point, less factory production due to pandemic. And uh, I can elaborate the discussion, but it's better to see the hard facts in the news. Okay, the first point. Green Pig Bistro. It could shape up to be the busiest Saturday in the Virginia restaurant's 10-year history. Customers are back. <laughs> But beyond the dishes, other things are missing for head chef Tracy O'Grady, an induction burner. We've been waiting for the part for two and a half months. And four months for a wine cooler. So here we see that the, the supply of machineries are late. It could be on a boat. It could still be in the factory. It could be at a port. It could be on a semi. COVID-19 has created a major delay in products from... So, we saw that, okay, uh, due to less factory production, pandemic, and delay in supply, there is a major problem with machineries around the world. Right? Then, the second point is, war is affecting the global supply chain in a drastic way. Highly inflated prices less supply of grains, less supply of oil, then uh, yeah, uh, people also have to reroute now the route of global supply chain by air as well as by sea. Some of the hard facts we'll see now. Grim predictions, it says food prices could surge by up to 22%. You could say it's the perfect storm. First climate change, then the Wuhan virus, and now war. Look at the numbers since 2020. Wheat prices are up 33%. Sunflower oil prices up 60%. If the war drags on, things could get worse. Is there any way to contain this rise? Well, other producers... Well, in the Netherlands, uh, I work in the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands, I have seen... In many supermarkets, the sun, there is a shortage of sunflower oil and the prices are also inflated by, I think, 15%. Uh, okay, coming to the third point, it's lack of strategic distribution centers. Because ports receive but can't keep it long and containers need to go to the distribution centers. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, ships arrive at the port there is, and the problem starts from there. That is, there is lack of workers in the port to help in the unloading because we need for the, uh, for the uh, crane to lift, we need an operator, crane operator and uh, the ground staff has to monitor whether it is placed on the right truck or not. So there, uh, we are missing staff there. And then the port, the containers that are coming to the port has to also leave the port to create the space. But that is also not happening 
because of several reasons. We'll see the hard facts now. We have more than 15,000 international longshore and warehouse union members that work on the docks. My job as a longshore worker is to help in the operations that move cargo through the terminals on Long Beach and Los Angeles ports. What I typically do is drive a UTR. That stands for utility tractor rig. It's just kind of a compact truck that's strong enough to haul the tonnage. So what I do is I take cargo from point A to point B to a designated spot out in the yard to be stacked for outside truckers to come pick up to take to the retailer's destination. So here we heard a story about a truck operator. So whenever the container arrives at the port, the offloading is done by the crane near to the port only, but that is not where the point where the, the trucking companies can come to load the containers. So from the offloading point to the loading point where the, uh, uh, the, the, the logistics company truck can come to load, it's a gap. It's in big ports, it's a long distance, like one or two, one or two kilometers or more, maybe more than that. So we need a human driver, like here we, we saw, to carry that container from that point to this point. It's like internal uh, uh, distribution within the port. But we have lack of staff or shortages of staff during the pandemic. And now we have all the ports are filled with containers. So all inbound ships are not able to offload at the right time. Okay, then there is a big issue of lack of raw materials because uh, because of war. Yeah, uh, uh, Ukraine is the highest producer of uh, wheat or, or a substantial contributor of wheat in the exports. But now that, that has stopped. Even uh, some, the raw product, the raw materials of sunflower oil, even Russia is supplier of uh, oil and some other machinery parts so that has also stopped so because of this the end products are also delayed in delivery <clears throat> so the, the 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 location at which raw materials are uh, assembled yeah that is also getting delayed the finished product customs policies and long waiting hours of trucks <clears throat> also uh, the global supply chain is affected by the policy maker or the policies that are made by higher officials at, for the customs. For example, uh, during Brexit, yeah, the document process was taking a long time uh, because the policies uh, from the top to the bottom, uh, yeah, it has it was it was it was soon and people were not ready enough to uh arrange everything i will put it in that way and uh, okay what needs to be done exactly was not communicated from the top to the bottom uh, so so there was a communication gap also and uh, because of that uh, drivers have to suffer because they didn't have the right documents and uh, the trucking company has to be a lot of waiting hours at the yard okay then uh, lack of skilled planners in many logistics companies yeah the planners only do their job like okay plan from a to b but the a, there is a difference between a good planner an experienced planner and an intelligent planner well a good planner is the guy who can okay do his job or her job in time like okay eight to five job plan from a to b bang done then but an experienced planner who really takes care about okay what what the truck is going to do next whether uh, it has to go to uk or uh, to berlin or to india or to istanbul wherever i don't know but where it has to go next so it has to take care of that and will plan accordingly the combination of truck trailer and driver but an intelligent planner also takes care into account the empty kilometers because the empty kilometers are cost to the company 
and uh, yeah the fuel consumption the machinery uh, uh, degradation or uh, the wear and tear of the tires and lot of things the driver cost so all those things are taken into account and planned accordingly with the right set of truck trailer and driver and then a trip is executed so the industry lacks intelligent planners unskilled people in warehouse well uh, there is a difference between uh, yeah the person who knows where the things belongs to which shelf or randomly just deploying uh, the machineries and dropping it in some shelf so there is a lack of skill with people because right tags has to be made right uh, barcodes has to be put so yeah if there are errors error margin of more than 5% then it leads to delay or wrong product delivery politics and policies uh, for example like during uh, for each country has their own covid rules like in netherlands uh, uh, it has a mar- margin of tolerance but in uh, china there is zero covid tolerance policy and that leads to lack of workers at the port because yeah if the, if, if 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 you have covid then you have to stay at home there is no slack for working or something uh, uh, on the field so uh, yeah uh, so they, they are they are very strict and that is affecting global supply chain it's all over the news higher cost of operation and less revenue <clears throat> sorry excuse me higher cost of operation less revenue to shippers well i work with a logistics company and we are shippers but i see the day to day problems like uh, okay for um, going from a to b uh, the revenue that we are receiving is not sufficient or uh, not sufficient for all the cost calculation or for the cost that we uh, spent or the expenses that we have for that particular shipment for example uh, a to b its uh, revenue is around 1500 but the cost is around 1600 including the empty kilometers so uh, yeah mm, uh, regarding uh, and and when we go to the uh, client for uh, a hike in rates hike in the uh, prices h- hike in the rates then they say that okay they are going to give this uh, contract to another shipper who is uh, cheap so yeah we don't want to lose customers also so that's why yeah we have to adjust somehow our way of working with uh, the customers but that is a big problem also now and uh, we also lack costing engineers or people who can do post calculation in the logistics companies and good tooling also but we will discuss about data engineering part in the later part of this video okay so i summarized all the points obvious points which are known to many people that okay these are the reasons why supply chain is getting affected but there are some points which i find surprising as well as i find uh, intro means i got means very insightful and uh, i find it that okay let's discuss about these points i find that during my literature review there was not much research or literature review available so maybe uh, for the uh, research topics for masters or bachelor students could be interesting this these topics okay so i will be discussing each point one by one the first point global supply chain is get, getting affected because of co2 emission rules 